Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I uh, thought we'd get back on with this project. Now um, if you cast your mind back quite a way you'll find some videos on this. This is a uh, Le Vox de Son Matier, um, which is French for HMV. Uh, this is a French um, HMV record player that I uh, picked up from a car boot sale. Um, paid probably more than I should have um, for because I really like the look of it. Um, unfortunately, with this being a French player, uh, it's dual voltage. As in, um, there was a selector on the top here on the record deck and you could select it between um, 220 volts or 110 volts, which were the two voltages used in France back when this was made in like the uh, mid-1950s. And unfortunately, what had happened is someone had brought it over here um, with it set to the 110 volt setting and plugged it in and pretty much cremated the whole thing um, they'd um, blown the amplifier, they'd blown the mains transformer in the amplifier um, but as well as that they'd blown the um, windings on the motor for the record deck um, the record deck that was originally in here was a um, American um, an American designed and an American made um, I'm trying to think of the name of the manufacturer now um, oh it's gone out of my head anyway it's um, not what you would find in most um, like British players it was a US um, made auto changer with the, basically you, you had to use the records with the um, centre punched out on them and um, it had like a centre cone here. You can look back on my um, previous videos on this player anyway because um, I still had the um, deck in it then. Um, but basically that deck, it's um, RCA, that's who uh, made it, it was an RCA um, auto changer. Uh, the problem with it is, um, one, the motor was um, goosed on it. It's not even as though I could pick a motor up from the US and um, ship it over and fit it to that deck because it'd be 110 volts and that was a special motor made for obviously the European market which had the um, two windings on it and if you connect to the O in series the, it was... Um, 110 volts if you connected them in parallel it was um, good for 220 volts I don't know how the um, US versions of their motors are wired I doubt they're wired like that uh, plus uh, the cartridge on it um, I don't know if you can get replacements for that cartridge I don't know if you can get replacements for the stylus in it um, and it was in a poor state um, I actually let Andy have um, the deck out of this because he likes messing with weird and wonderful things he likes messing with all kinds of record decks uh, I just want to make this into a good reliable player um, so with that in mind I want to put a different deck in it um, as you can see at the moment uh, I've got a nice big void there where the deck should be um, the amplifier is all rebuilt I've not got any valves in it at the moment because I'm still messing and playing and fiddling about with things um, but basically this is ready to receive its new deck now initially what I was intending on putting in here was something like the um, Claro um, the Claro deck which is a really nice again period correct mid 50s um, auto changer um, the trouble is and I, and I got one basically I bought a scrap record player um, from the car boots it's um, a Ferguson it's not worth repairing it's um, too physically damaged it's one of the sets with a louvered top on it like that and all the louvers are all smashed on it uh, they're, they've got a horrendous amplifier in them anyway because I've had one through my hands before um, it's an AC it's um, ACDC technology amp using two um, UCL, UCL 83s in push pull so it's got a fair bit of punch but um, the whole thing's ACDC technology, um, it's not what I consider safe and like I said the whole thing was um, in a horrific condition. But I bought it for that um, Claro deck which was in really nice order on it, just needs a service. Uh, unfortunately I, was all, I all got uh, ready to get Andy to um, give it a full service for me. 
um, and put it in here. Pro uh, it's a good job I checked this before I actually sent it off to Andy. Um, what I found is no matter how I fit it in here, I couldn't actually get it in with the spindle attached um, and get the lid to close. There just was not enough room. Um, I, it was when, unfortunately with them Claros you can't just take the spindle out and leave it to one side like you can on certain um, players like the later Garrard decks. You can actually take the um, stacking spindle out and just put a single place spindle in and just store that. Not on a deck though that would be period correct for this and I really really wanted to keep this period correct. Which got me thinking, um, why does it have to have a, an auto changer in it? This is the type of player that someone's going to have that, you know, they could have it on the table next to them just to play a record. So it doesn't need to have an auto changer in it. It would actually be really, really nice to make it just with a nice single play um, turntable in there. So, what I thought. I don't know, I'm sure a few people will be horrified at uh, this, but no, this is what I think I'm going to fit. Ooh. These are probably <laughs> one of the worst um, record players that were out in the 50s and 60s. This is your stereotypical one valve wonder. Um, basically they were bedroom record players, um, usually use something like um, a UL84, um, UL41, something like that. Um, what, they were called a one valve wonder but most of them had two valves. You had that and you had like um, a UY42, a U, um, UY82, so 81, something like that as the rectifier, a half wave rectifier valve in there as well and then and just an output valve. And then you had um, a high output crystal cartridge that produced about 3 volts output just driving that um, output valve direct. So there was virtually no components in, in here. It was as simple and as basic as you could get. They were horrendous. They were all obviously um, ACDC technology. Um, there was no safety in them, there was no isolation in them. Um, they were horrific players. Um, this one is not in fantastic condition but uh, this one's actually just about restorable. Um, but I have loads of these which aren't, um, you know, the cabinets are beyond saving and I just use them as parts machines. Um, but I thought because obviously things like the output transformers, the speakers, um, the cartridges if they work, uh, there's loads of parts on these that can go for better more deserving record players. Um, but like I, say, I, I tend to keep them about until absolutely everything is stripped off them. I then usually end up cleaning these cases out and they get <laughs> they are actually really really handy for valve storage. Um, I've got loads of these cases down in my cellar um, from old record players that I've um, stripped for parts. And I just use them, for, like I said, for valve storage and things like that. But anyway, so that was the idea. I'm going to fit the deck out of one of those. Well, like I said, not this one in particular. Andy actually has given me a region tone one um, that he was going to scrap. Um, which um, he said I could use the deck and parts off for this project. Uh, I'm not sure whether I am going to or, um, or not yet because I do have a few um, of these players which are scrap and that region tone one is actually quite nice. I have got an idea I might have a look at um, actually restoring that because it's a little bit better than your average cardboard um, suitcase record player like this one. Anyway, first thing we need to do I have done some work on this already so um, I weren't going to show any of that because I had to do it down in my uh, workshop and it's a little bit crowded um, really to work in there with a camera but I've made a few bits to make this so it's actually going to be possible to do so first things first we've got the original points in here where the original deck uh, was mounted it had these little standoffs which are basically a, a really hard rubber and they were mounted in the corners like that and that's what the original deck 
sat on. Another prop reason why, um, again, I was not that mad about retaining the original deck. These are meant to be held on with like these special little clips, um, like that that actually hold the deck in place and when I got this most of those are broken I and mean, I don't I haven't got a clue where you get anything like that obviously I'll keep them as spares just in case I need them for another um, player again things like this will all be kept um, there's no reason why you couldn't return this player exactly to originally if you got a good working deck um, for it I'm not going to do anything to it which is actually going to damage it I mean, it's not original anymore anyway because I've changed the mains transformer in it. It's got I've reconfigured the way that the um mains works on it and I've put a completely different mains transformer in it. So um, it's not original anyway. So like I said for any of the purists it's it's not a problem. It's already been um modified. Right so um what we need to do is put basically a motorboard in there that's going to take the um, new deck. And that's where I come up with the first issue. Now I cut, I measured and I cut myself a motorboard. About the right thickness, about quarter inch thick um, ply. The problem was when I put it in, it doesn't fit square if you look it hits the transformer at the front there so that wasn't going to work so what I had to do oops I I've got this out I had to make that so basically what I've done there is I've made a frame up which brings Basically, it fits in there like that. It screws down in four places one there, one there, one there, and one there. So that frame will screw in place there. The motorboard. Will then basically go on like that there. And then the turntable obviously will go on here. So, you know, the Oh, I'm for the stylus and everything will um, then be fitted on there. So that's basically where we're at. So what um, I had to do then was I've got that's the mechanism. This one's a bit of a, um, a chop down one. It's missing its motor, but um, it'll do for um, mocking things up. Like I say, I've got quite a few of these that have come out of um, scrap players over the years just needs a bit of a grease up that one actually but um, that is base that is basically the motor deck without the with the actual turntable removed that's all it is that's um, you've got an on off there which just takes the idler away from the actual um, turntable and then you've got a speed selector one nice thing about these is the R4 speed so you've got your 16 your 33 your 45 and your 78 on there um, and it's period correct. Um, these are from the um, 1950s. Um, I think they were used well into the 1960s on these like super cheap uh, record players. But um, so these, this is about right period, mid 1950s for this um, for this player. So I'm quite happy to actually use it. But what I had to do then is basically figure out where is this going on the motorboard. So we've got the old motorboard off one of those um, scrap um, suitcase record players. And what it was a case of doing, and it took a few attempts to get this right, I've done it on the other side. So we look here, I basically drew where that frame that I um, built and is going to secure down actually sits. I then took the old motorboard, laid that over the top there and first I was actually going to fit it like exactly like it is on the uh, record player here so I lined it all up there, marked everything up. The problem that I found was the record will sit and it'll actually fit in the surround of the record player so the lid could be shut with the record actually playing on it which is one of the things that I wanted 
but the problem was that I'll have to cut out where the frame was basically the cradle that's going to hold this underneath is there I'd have to cut a big chunk of it out to allow that to sit so I thought well providing that point there is the same because that's where the record basically has to sit on here and clear all the way around why does that have to sit there so all I did was I rotated that until I could get it so that was on the inside of that hole there but everything else still um, lines up so the hot that basically the point there where the record spins from the point is exactly the same all I've done is slightly turn the exact the um, mechanism so it sits a little bit further over there it still will clear absolutely everything and it means that I don't have to trim a big chunk out of um, that frame that I've built down there to clear it and it keeps it well away from the uh, mains transformer that's down there as well so what I will do is I will poddle off now down to the uh, workshop get the old jigsaw out and I will cut out the blue line as you can see I've had to have a few attempts until I, got, until I was completely happy with the fitment and where it was actually sitting um, so the blue one was the one that I was happiest with so I'll go out and I'll chop that out there I'll drill the hole out for the stylus and the rest and everything and um, pop some holes down here so we can actually secure the thing down um, and then I think we'll come back and we'll have a look at seeing actually trial fitting this in here and see whether it's going to work out the way I wanted it to so uh, back in a sec right okay we're back and we've got a hole I've also drilled obviously I've drilled for where the stylus was uh, the armrest and I've put the holes in round the edge where I'm going to put fixing screws to actually mount this down to the um, cradle that I've built for underneath it so that will go in there like that all nicely lined up and this is the moment of truth we've got uh, the turntable here that should go in and get this to line up that's about about there like that yeah that's about right so that's where the turntable I think is going to um, sit I think that's about right there I'll tell you what we can do we can get a, uh, a record now it's actually a 78 but I want this player to be able to play anything that's I mean it's nice it's got 16 to 78 on the actual um, player so it will be nice to be able to play anything that's as big a 78 as you get a full size 12 inch um, 78 so let us see if that's going to fit right we're a little bit close uh, there let's see if we can just sneak that back a tiny touch I mean we can there is a little bit of play room here let's try that oh that's perfect look at that We've got probably about six, seven mil at the back there. We've got a good 12 mil there. We've got about six or seven mil there. And that's as big a record of this thing is ever going to take. Let's see if the lid's going to shut with it on. I don't know whether you're going to be able to play it with the lid down, but at least we can know that the lid's definitely going to shut with a, um, a record on like that. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. So, the thing is, let me put that record somewhere, it's not going to get damaged. Put it up there. It is on your test record, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, right, so that's all going to work out really nicely. Um, what isn't going to look, work out so well is that. That looks pretty horrible, doesn't it? Um, so what I think I'm going to do... Let's do something about the uh, motorboard. Now we could paint it, but with we are with with such a nice looking cabinet, um, I don't think that's going to work out. So what I've come up with, I bought this stuff for actually recovering record players, and then realised it wasn't really going to work very well because it's too thick. But in this instance, where all it's doing is covering one motorboard like that. I think it's going to work 
and that's uh, this stuff. Now it's like um, a fake um, leather, but the problem is it's got a backing on it like that, which makes it a little bit thicker um, than what would have originally been used, like this leather cloth that they would have originally used. I've tried it on a record player actually recovering the case and it didn't work well. Um, it looked terrible actually afterwards. But I have a feeling, I think for the motorboard um, fixed down like that, this would actually work really, really well. So what I'm going to do, I've got some, uh, this is actually um, automotive um, trim fix. It's basically spray for, uh, a spray adhesive. So um, I'm going to go outside now and I'm going to stick that to that and then I think we'll come back when um, I've got that all stuck down and we can actually have a proper go at mounting that deck and perhaps the turn you know, the stylus, um, the arm and everything on here and actually seeing how it's going to look in the um, player. I don't know if we're actually getting it all connected up and working in this video but um, at least I want to see if we can get it all in there and see what the actual um, aesthetic of it is. So um, I'll get that glued down to that and we'll be right back. Right, okay, we're back. And um, I've stuck basically that material down to the uh, baseboard. I stuck it with that spray mount. It's actually worked quite well. I'll just clear some of this um, muck and rubbish off my bench. I am due to have a bench tidy. I've, um, I've been tidying the rest of the workshop recently. But I haven't got around to doing the bench yet. Right, that's better. So basically we've got that stuck down on there. But what I want to do now is I want to basically make sure it's no chance of coming off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the excess over. And then we're going to staple it in place. So I've got my... Uh, stapler here so basically the idea is going to be to pull it nice and tight and then oops, if the stapler decides it's going to work just put staples in this and I've just tried it and it works absolutely fine then I come to do the video and what's the first thing that happens the bloody stapler jams Bear with us a second folk, I'll be back, right back as soon as I've um, sorted the uh, stapler out. Right, we're back and it seems to be behaving now. So basically it's a case of pulling it tight. And yet again. As soon as I put the camera back on, look, them two, perfect. As soon as I put the camera back on, it's playing up again. And clear it. Let's try again. There we go, that's gone in nicely. So, again, it's just a case of pulling it tight. it done there is put one in perfectly and then put another one in upside down underneath it. Uh. There we go. So you get the idea basically it's just a case of then spinning it round doing the same on this side pulling it nice and tight Tell you what, I'll come back when I've got this done and I've got this bloody staple gun to work properly. <laughs> back in a sec. Right, okay, we're back. And that was an absolute pig. Um, i come to the conclusion, actually, I don't think those staples are actually the right staples for that staple gun. Um, there's probably about 60 staples all over my workshop that didn't fire in properly. But anyway, we've got enough in there to secure it um, properly. So what we need to do now 
is we need to cut out obviously where the uh, motors go in there and we need to cut out for where the um, stylus is, uh, well the stylus arm is going. So let's just find, there we go, that should work. That um, jolly old scalpel here. So it should just be a case of finding where the edge of that is. This stuff is actually fairly tough. Let's see if I've got a slightly sharper scalpel. But basically it's going to be a case of just following the shape. tension on it and basically find the edge there we go I don't want to stretch it too much because I don't want to stretch the outer fabric this is going to be the tricky bit this is where the uh, the spindle sits Going over there a little bit, but that will be hidden by the uh, turntable, I hope. Right, okay, I think we're there. You can understand why I, I decided this stuff was too thick to actually uh, recover cases with. Is a bit too springy and a bit too bouncy, but so for this, it's actually going to work out really well. There we go. There we go. We're through. Got that out. There we are. Pull that out there. So we've got our space now for our um, our turntable there to go in. In fact, while we're in here, let's just figure out where the arm's going to go. We'll notch that out because I want to try and trial fit the arm as well. there now. Right, let's just bring the player itself back in. Ooh, you're a heavy brute. Right, now that will need fixing uh, properly in place. Well, let's try putting the that's not a bad, that's not actually going to work bad is it? That's going to look quite decent. Just uh, switch that on. Yeah, I th I'm quite happy with that. Obviously it needs squaring up a little bit like that. But that is going to work really, really well in there. It's not a bad colour match actually. And we've just got a nice little gap along there. There's just a nice gap all the way around actually. That's just right. That's just what I was looking for. Let's use this... Um, this scrap deck to set it up. Right, so if that goes and sits in there like that. Let's trial fit. That on there. 
from there let's get it to lock in place there we go let's just try that um, 12 inch record on there again oh look at that that fits so we can perhaps just go back a tiny touch with it although it overhangs there absolutely fine no we don't so we don't want to hide that let's, let's try that again there's a good clearance there there's good clearance there let's see that the lid's going to be all right yeah the lid's going to shut I'm quite happy with that yeah I'm quite pleased with that I think that's going to work we could go that way a smidgen and go perhaps that way oh yeah we've got a bit of play there so I just want to make sure I've got enough play that it's going to clear there even if the record's ever so slightly warped which obviously with these old um, old records can be a thing I think about there is about perfect I can get to the um, control there no problem get to the speed selector in fact let's just check with the record on I can yeah I can still get to the um, switch there to switch the actual motor off and on that is absolutely perfect that I'm happy with that so let's pop that off there can't go any further that way else it's going to be exposed so I think we're about right there and I should be able to fix that down with the original just make sure I am absolutely square everywhere sorry if I'm blocking the shot um, everyone folks I just want to get this as close on as I can which is about there make sure that that's square like that and then we'll put the screws in here to hold it down Oops. I mean I won't probably be using this actual deck but because I'll be using exactly the same type of deck the holes will be exactly the same for actually mounting it. Oops. Probably be better using my electric to do this, but never mind. There we go. tight put one more screw yes we do that goes in there Should have really drilled a pilot hole first, but it's going. There we go. Yeah, that would have been easier if I drilled a pilot hole first, so that's my fault, but there we go. That is the mechanism mounted quite nicely there. Like I said, I've still got to find out where the holes are should be one two three four five I don't think I'm probably going to bother using that one there 
it's not going to be needed I don't think and it'll be right under where the uh, turntable sits there's the turntable on there I think that actually works really nicely um, size wise in the player let's get um, let's get an arm and we will have a look some um, scrap bits in here. Yeah, we've got a good arm. Needs a little bit of work, I think. I think it'll probably do the job, though. What else have we got in here? Oh, there's that bit. There's a stand. Now we could easily go for a better arm than this, but I think it'll do for getting us started to be honest. Just put the, uh, put the tensioner back on. The arm's a bit floppy because obviously it needs um, the tension setting for whatever uh, cartridge I end up putting in it. Let us see if this is actually going to fit though. In fact we could pull them wires out because I think I'm going to rewire it anyway. And all we're trying to do today is just make sure everything's going to fit and work as we want it to. Right, so I think that's going to work. Let's, um, in fact, we'll unhook the spring for now because it makes life a little bit easier while we uh, fiddle about with it. But we'll put that spring back on. That's on one side. It just means that the arm's not going to keep trying to um, fight us while we mess about with this. And we want to try and put that stand in place where it goes. Just so we can basically roughing everything up at the moment to make sure it's actually going to uh, work the way we want it to. Is it that the right one? Yeah, we've got the right nut for the back of there. The rubber on there actually feels pretty good so we can reuse that for now. Spare of those rubbers as well in there. Right. So yeah, got to remember I've still got to fix that down. Let's uh in fact, let's put the stand on first so we know where it's actually um, going to sit. So, we need to make that hole come all the way through, don't we? So I've pre-drilled the hole where the uh, stand has to sit there. Can you see that on camera? I don't know. Ooh. I'm basically just putting a screwdriver through so I can um, make a mark in the vinyl on that side. Let's get the screw. I think I should have drilled that hole a tiny bit bigger, but I think it'll work. Let's get a flat blade. What I don't want it to do is to make a mess of the vinyl on the other side. So I'm having to hold the vinyl down while I uh, fight the screw through it. But if we turn it enough time so it's not actually biting into the uh, right, I think that's 
going to work nicely. I think that is going to work really nicely. Let's uh, tighten that down. Let's flip that back in there. Okay, so we've got a stand there. I'm quite pleased with that. Let us see if we can get the arm to work. So the arm. Oh yeah. Now most important thing is the lid going to shut. Oh yeah. Lovely. I think that's going to work really, really nicely. So last thing we need to do is just secure that arm in place with a nut on the back. Again, I don't know if this is the arm I'm actually going to use or not, because I do have a few others. But it does match the um, turntable, to be honest. I didn't like the brownness of it, but I said it is correct for for that turntable. It is like as cheap a uh, tone arm as you can get to be honest, but they're still not too bad. Um, they're not heavy. It's a, a very light um, tone arm. So it shouldn't track um, too heavy when this thing's all set up and actually working. Right, I'm actually quite pleased with that. That's actually looking fairly decent. Let's just try that uh, Let's try that 78 on there again and make sure that that is indeed going to work okay. Oh look at that. I think we're going to get away with that you know. I think that is actually going to work really 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 well. That should just track along there really nicely. Have I got a scrap? Let me just see if I've got a scrap um, cartridge we could quickly try in there just to see um, fitment wise. Yeah, both these are dead. Have I, got a, have I got a screw to mount it? Have I got a mounting screw kicking about here? That is the question. Oops, I wonder if that would work just for. Um, just for a test. No, it's too big, isn't it? I need something imperial. I just want to see if that fit in there, because that is the correct type of cartridge. Um, all I need to find is a cartridge mounting screw. Just bear with me a second folks, I'll just see what I can find. Right, okay, I've found one. Not correct, but it should do just to uh, prove this point. So we'll take this um, cartridge. This cartridge, like I say, it's no good, it's dead. It's um, one that I might rebuild. Well, let's see if we can just uh, get this screw to hold it. Are you going to hold? Just. Right. So that's it basically set up as it would be with a um, cartridge in. Again, let's see if we've put that on the... Oh, that's perfect. It clears the record really, really nicely there. So that can play all the way in. And yeah, that clears the record absolutely perfectly there. I'm dead happy with that. Excuse me. No, I'm really, really pleased. I think that's actually going to work out incredibly well. I wonder whether it will actually be able to play with the... I think it can. I think you will actually be able to play it with the lid closed. I think there's just enough room for that to sit like that. It not to interfere. We obviously we wouldn't know that until we actually played it because it is going to be damn damn close. But um, nonetheless, 
I'm happy with that setup. I'm happy with that turntable um, and the way it looks in this record player. So some people might think it's a, a huge downgrade considering this had an auto changer in it originally. But even if that auto changer was still working, um, one of the problems with it is you can only play 45 stacks of 45s with the um, centre holes removed from it because, like I say, it uses a, a centre um, cone like that that drops the um, records. I don't like that mechanism. It's it, like I say, it's an American mechanism, so finding parts for it or um, servicing it over here is really, really going to be very, very tricky. Um, Finding cartridges and stylus for the cartridge again over here is probably going to be really 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 tricky This I can put just about whatever cartridge I want in there um, and get it to work uh, The turntable like I said it's basic, but it's tried and true It'll put a standard 45. It's got the adapter ring for the um, large holes built into it like that And it'll play all speeds that I want and it's got a proper off on it as well. When you basically pull it into the off position like that, it pulls the idler wheel away from the motor. So um, when you're storing these, if basically if you store it in the off position like that, you're not going to damage your idler wheel. And when you come to play it again, it's not going to have that thump, 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 thump every time the um, record player goes round. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, I've got what I wanted to get accomplished in this video accomplished you know we've gone from um, an amplifier in a case and a big gaping hole to something that actually looks um, kind of like a record player again so what I think we'll do in the next video on this is actually get that connected up to that get everything put the get the valves back in the amplifier um, get all this actually wired up correctly and um, get a cartridge in it and actually see what this thing sounds like um, playing a record so Hope you enjoyed the um, update on this project, um, so I will say thanks for watching and goodbye.